This is a little bit of a different video to my normal ones that I put on my channel in that I am actually going to talk about a luxury watch manufacturer. Rolex uh, produced some of the most amazing and incredible watches on this planet. I am a humongous Rolex watch fan. The Submariner model, the Bluesy, is my ultimate all-round favourite grail watch. One day, I will, hopefully one day in the future, I will buy that watch because I think it is the perfect marriage of class, performance and style. It has everything that I love about watches. A ceramic bezel, a beautiful steel bracelet, an amazing clasp with an amazing quick, quick adjust, a gorgeous dial, a classy blue with gold and with silver. It is my absolute all-time favourite Grail watch. However, I absolutely despise the Rolex brand, the Rolex company. The Rolex company, I believe, and you can go online and read their reviews of how they treat treat their customers. I think on the whole, they have an appalling attitude to, to customers. And the whole... Uh, the latest, uh, well, whether that be in regards to ripping people off when they need their watches repaired, or whether it comes to the latest fiasco, which has been happening for over five years now, which has to do with the supply of Rolex watches. Ro there, there's been various videos recently by Bark and Jack, by Adrian at Bark and Jack, and by Bruce Williams who have both given their take, and obviously Paul Thorpe and many other watch commentators have given their Thorpe. And I agree broadly with Paul Thorpe's views in that Rolex are purposefully limiting supply. They're limiting supply on purpose. They're not producing as much as they should be producing to meet demand. And they're doing it on purpose to do various things. One is... They're looking now to even further increase exclusivity and long-term move up an even further level from the likes of Omega, etc., into the level of Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet. Now, those watch, some of the Patek Philippe's and AP models go for over a hundred grand um, on the grey market. And some of the list prices, I believe, are over 40 grand, 50 grand for some of their models. So, um, Rolex watches generally do not cost that much in terms of if you're buying them at list. But of course, you can't reasonably buy them at list anymore unless you're extremely lucky. Because if you go to any Rolex boutique in the world, it's rare that they have one of each um, sports model in stock. You can't get a Daytona, you can't get a Submariner, uh, you can't even get an Explorer, you can't get, you know, um, the, a GMT Master. They're so difficult to get from a dealer. You have these ridiculous wait lists and all that. The reasons why they're doing it when they've had five years now of this absolute insane demand, which has increased for various reasons with more and more celebrities wearing Rolex, um, with the whole Instagram phenomenon and all this, Rolex watches have gone through the, through the roof and they are not producing anywhere near enough to meet demand. People believe they're producing around 400,000 watches per year, but, uh, sorry, sorry, 800,000 to a million watches per year, but they could easily quadruple or you know even more than that they could even increase supply even more than that if they wanted to now where supply is limited exclusivity and value increases because less and less people have the watch now when you do that in the era of the you know the age of instagram and social media and so forth and when every celebrity is essentially wearing rolex they are the ultimate luxury brand. But they've made a conscious decision, in my opinion, to purposely limit supply even further, such that ADs are getting less and less models, I believe, 
um, than they would than they used to have. They used to be um, a constant supply of GMTs, Submariners, Daytonas, and so forth. Whereas now they're limiting them even more, restricting supply, um, such that you have to enter this ridiculous wait list where you can get literally quoted five to eight years to buy a Daytona. Now, that is ridiculous. Now, of course, the ADs will, will only supply um, to people who spend generally a lot of money in their shops. Now, I don't know if this breaches consumer law. I don't know if that... Obviously, I believe that is immoral in that it should be a first-come, first-serve basis. And so that they should have to su supply to people who've been on the waiting list the longest. But of course they don't do that because they don't care and they tr will treat you like a piece of crap. Now there's two ways Rolex can resolve the whole thing where on the grey market uh, flippers are buying them from dealers and immediately doubling the, pr the, the, the price and then obviously making like a massive profit margin. Um... The way they resolve this is, is two ways. Number one, they massively increase supply. They've had five years to increase supply. They have massive billions and billions of turnover. They could build a factory in a few months. They could, if they wanted to, they could have increased supply by now. So the, the arguments that they couldn't do it or they couldn't take on more staff or they couldn't push more, more watches through their current production levels is total and utter BS. They have the funding in their complex corporate structure. Um, they have the funding easily to increase supply. So clearly the goal of Rolex is not actually in the short term to sell more watches. It is to further the brand, to, to increase exclusivity and demand for their watches in the long term and possibly up, make them up a notch into an even further bracket. Because if you think about it, on the grey market with the prices going at ridiculous prices, they are testing the waters to see what they can get if they upped the list price. If they up the list price of a, of a, of a Submariner by, say, you know, to say 15 grand, they're showing essentially that they can still get the sales at that price. They're upping and upping. The grey market is showing that they can get these ridiculous prices, even if it it excludes thousands, if not millions of people that would have, you know, that have a bit of money to, to, to buy a luxury watch and previously would have bought them, would have spent six grand for a, a Rolex or but I know it costs a bit more than that now, but they would have spent a few grand on an Explorer, but now they're being priced out and they're being limited out of the market because of this ridiculous system where Rolex are purposely making a, a five-year... They've made the statement where they're going to decrease supply. Not They've not literally made the statement. I'm saying they're doing it, obviously, not verbally, but they're doing it in their actions, in that they make, they've made a long-term strategic goal to up a new level and to go enter into a further range of exclusivity and demand. That's unfortunately what I believe they, they've done. Now, the second thing they can do to cut the whole grey market out is, is to allow direct ordering. Omega allow direct ordering. You can order a Seamaster off Omega.com. You can order it for a few grand and they will then make the watch or they will supply it to you if they've got stock. And ultimately, that's what if Rol if Rolex really cared about the flippers and the grey market, they would allow direct ordering because as far as I'm aware, with contract law, you couldn't enter a contract reasonably uh, and have to wait five years when you've paid for the watch. That's utterly ridiculous. So they would have to they would have to say um, produce it, I would think, within about twelve months. So ultimately, if they wanted to, because then you could buy it then at the RRP, at the list price. You could buy it, you know, um, at what Rolex believe is the fair price for the watch. Um, not the ridiculous grey market prices where a Daytona is £25,000. So if Rolex give a toss about customers, um, they would end this whole fiasco and they would allow their long-term fans to buy their watches at reasonable prices instead of this ridiculous system where people have to enter a wait list with 
uh, an AD who speaks to them like a piece of shit and makes them wait years and years. This is ridiculous and doesn't even give it them anyway. Just takes the details and then passes it to their, their flippers um, who then flip it for a massive profit and then the people who actually want to keep the watches and use them don't. The way this is resolved is by one triple, quadruple, increased demand supply by producing more factories by producing more staff and getting more watches out there and two by allowing direct ordering the the prices of these watches will mean 99 percent of the public will never buy them anyway but of course and but the problem is with rolex even though their senior management in my opinion have obviously made this decision to do this to purposely limit supply for long-term strategic commercial goals of increasing the exclusivity and value of the brand so they can increase the prices even further and not have to produce as many watches they've clearly made that decision in my opinion um what they're risking they're risking ruining the brand they're risking losing thousands and thousands of customers who would have previously ordered their products and that in the long long term could in in reality come back to bite them in the ass what can you do in the meantime to show your discontent with Rolex and the ADs who, who treat you like this? You could boycott their, their products for a few years. You could, until this, this disaster ends, you could boycott their products if you wanted to. That would, if tomorrow morning they knew that there was a national or international boycott of Rolex and their, their, their products through the ADs, Tomorrow morning, there'd be 25 Daytonas in every single AD in Britain and America. They would be, because they would completely crap the pants and get the watches where they need to be. So I think you should do a bit of, you know, give them a bit of your, their own medicine that they've been giving you. They've been taking the piss out of you for five years, not letting you buy the watches. When you've had the money, you've worked really hard and you want to get one of their Submariners or Daytonas or whatever it may be. And they're making you play this ridiculous game. Don't play the game. These are just my thoughts. Thanks a lot for watching my video. It's been Dave. Thanks a lot.